Brian Preston, the money guy. Let's talk about the, the elephant in the room, because yeah, there is a, th- a, a, a third thing. Yeah, remember, the big thing is, you know, the way a Roth IRA, a Roth 401k work is you put the money in now, you don't get a current year tax benefit, you pay tax on that money, but just like you said, it grows tax-free and accumulates, and then assuming you meet certain requirements, like being age 59 and a half, and it's been in the account for at least five years, you can go pull those, those dollars out tax-free. Well, so a lot of folks that are in their 20s and 30s and 40s are kind of making a bet on this future benefit that we're kind of counting on being there when we get to that age. Uh, And so one of the concerns that a lot of people ask us all the time is, how assured can we be that when we actually get to retirement, we're actually going to be able to get that money back tax-free? In other words, do you trust your government? Do you trust that you're going to take this benefit, which is the promise of tax-free growth, do you trust that that promise will actually be fulfilled? I think that's the thing is that I think a lot of people... And, and I'll even tell you, I am guilty of this a little bit in the fact that when I've seen people present me plans to accelerate the distribution of IRAs sure. at high tax rates, mm-hmm. not low tax rates. I, I believe me, we're going to talk about doing Roth conversions down the road, but at high tax rates, I've always had trouble with giving the government money now. Right for the potential of tax-free growth, because I always say that they could potentially they change, change the rules. rules. And, yeah. that, and that's the big fear. But I want to tell you there's been some positive developments that, that are kind of le- leaning in the direction that they really are going to honor their promise here. So the, the first thing is that if you look at this, 2010, what happened in 2010? Remember, this was all established in 1997, but in 2010, the government actually came back, passed legislation that said, you know what? Let's make this even more accessible to the public. So it used to be if you had to have a hundred, if you had income over a hundred thousand dollars, you couldn't do Roth conversions, meaning you couldn't transfer money from a traditional IRA and turn it into a Roth account, which was meaning tax free from yeah, that point. Yeah, that's a forward. strategy that a lot of people were doing prior to that point. So maybe it was someone who was later in life and they didn't need access to all of their funds and they wanted to create a pretty exciting, you know, mechanism for their children. They would take some of their pre-tax assets take a distribution, pay tax on those assets, and cut, convert those dollars into Roth. But, just like you said, you had to make under $100,000 in order to be able to do that. And But when they lifted the... So this is where the planning thing, where I kind of raised my eyebrows. So this, this all went down in 2010, where they changed the rules, right. and they said, no income limits. You make $6 million a year, who cares? You can do Roth conversions now. And this is actually what is what gave birth to the great planning opportunity of backdoor Roth contributions. Right. So in a minute, you go find out that there are limitations to making Roth contributions on the IRA side, not the 401k, 403b, or 457, but on the IRA. If you make too much, they don't allow you to do this, but there are still planning opportunities for you to consider. But And here's the other cool thing that was a positive trend. In 2010, if you did any conversions, you got to spread the taxes right. over two years. So this is why you had a lot of people that were turning. I, I saw cases, case studies, where people were turning seven-figure, meaning million-dollar and greater, traditional IRA or rollover IRA portfolios into Roths and paying the taxes oh, on the front end. Two years, yeah. and, 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 and they had a lot of analysis. But think about this. If you were paying 39.6 and it got moved down to you know 37 or whatever, right. that's still you, you're close to 40, not counting the state income tax and other things, but you could be looking at close to 40% of your assets going to the taxes. You got, you're going to have to have a lot of growth to overcome that. But that's still, right. it's a positive trend that they opened it up. Here's the second tr- thing that I've noticed. This happened last year. You know, we had this new tax legislation that came out in 2017, mm-hmm. lower tax rates. One of the things, now this was supposed to be a money maker for the government, and I'm glad it got beat back, but it does show that they're not trying to do away with Roth. They're more likely to do away with your traditional 401k or your traditional tax, uh, tax deduction that you get on those retirement employer plans and push more people towards the Roth right. vehicles. That's something because they, because what the government likes is they get to collect that tax That's money right. on the front end just for the promise that they're not going to tax you on the growth of those assets. So there are some positive trends. Now it's not great for your traditional savings and your current tax deduction, but it looks like Roth accounts are here to stay and there's not much jeopardy. They're not in jeopardy of losing right. their tax free treatment, which is a very good thing. But like most good things in the financial world, you know, our opinion is that uh, Roth is one piece of your financial puzzle. And so we want to kind of talk about how you use that. But one thing you'll probably notice that we're not going to mention here is we think that 
all of your assets should be Roth immediately, meaning if you are someone out there who does have a million dollar 401k or a million dollar rollover IRA, we're not suggesting just because Roth is fantastic, you should go convert all of your assets. So we want to kind of walk through how you should use your Roth and how it can be a valuable piece of your financial tool belt. 